If you're not thinking about formatting and presenting your spreadsheets properly, you are leaving so much on the table. I know so many good technicians in Excel who don't know how to present their work properly. It means people don't want to engage with their work. So how can we quickly make a spreadsheet look good? I've put a checklist together for you. We're going to use this checklist and in the te next 10 minutes, we're going to make a spreadsheet look good. Now you can get this checklist, the links in the video description below. When you download it, you will go on our marketing mailing list from which you can unsubscribe anytime. So with that said, I'm going to use the checklist as we go through. As always, you can download the download file and work along with me. This is what we're starting with, guys. Do you work with any uh, Excel files like this? But this is what we want to work towards. Can we do it in less than 10 minutes with our beauty in Excel checklist? So the first thing I'm thinking about is space space so take a look at your car dashboard yes next time you get in, in your car what you're thinking of me thinking of this guy on youtube talking about excel take a moment to really consciously look at your car dashboard it's a great example of using a small amount of space to communicate a lot of information yes exactly what we're trying to do in excel so using that as an inspiration i want to make better use of space in this spreadsheet so my first um uh, thing to do here is Put in some spacer columns and spacer rows. Now, all of the keyboard shortcuts I use, I'll put in the video description below. So I've got two columns in here. Column width three usually works for those spacer columns. And then just two rows in at the top here. So we're drawing the eye into the spreadsheet from the top left by using these spacer rows and columns. What about column widths? Well, we want consistent column widths and I recommend you use what's called a foundational unit. So what on earth does that mean? Alt H O W Y, by the way, is 8.26 to default column width. Why is it not five or eight or 10? I'd recommend using 10 and using it as a foundational number. I'm gonna hit the F4 key to re repeat the last action here. So now we've got consistent column width. So what's this idea of, of a foundational number? Well. If you need a wider column, and you will, use a multiple of our foundational number. So two times 10 is 20. Even I managed to do that without a spreadsheet. So 20 in here, you could even go to 30. So already things are looking a bit calmer here. And that's what we want to do. Communicate a sense of calm and order. Encourage your user to engage with the spreadsheet. So I'm also sensing we have inconsistent row heights holding down the shift key here. Go into the bottom of the data, Alt H O H, and I recommend you use 15 uh, as a row height. What's the default row height in Excel? Um, I think it's 14.4. Uh, there you go. Why is it 14.4? I'm not sure. I recommend 15 Alt H O H on the Windows PC. Let's hit that Windows shortcut command. Alt H O H on the Windows PC, typing in 15 and the rows are now all the same height. But we also want some spacer rows in here. So Alt H O H and then 10 for these spacer rows. Because these rows, they're not displaying data, but they're just keeping that sense of space, make everything look even and well organized. So this is our first step. Get everything spaced out properly and sort out those columns and rows. OK, let's talk about zoom level. Because you, you might say, Chris, well, it's easy to get more space on an Excel spreadsheet because I can just decrease the zoom level. Now, for me, this is an absolute non-negotiable. It's confusing for the user if in an Excel spreadsheet you have different zoom levels on different sheets. So I recommend working within the parameters you have. So set the zoom level to 100 and work within that parameter and learn how to make use of space just like on your car dashboard. Right, with that said, if you have buttons in the spreadsheet and charts, these need to be neat and tidy, uniformly sized and positioned. So I'd recommend with buttons, make sure your grid lines are switched on, hold down the Alt key, position those buttons and then lock them to the column, lock them to the row. This is gonna guarantee 
um, as long as the columns are the same size, of course, this is going to guarantee that your buttons are uniformly sized there. So they have to be the same size and this is a good way to line them up properly. You can then use Alt H F D O on the Windows PC. You can use select objects. I say this puts Excel into PowerPoint mode. You can use select objects to select some buttons. These are now nicely selected and I can move them uh, wherever I want to move them on the spreadsheet. We're going to drop them there for now. What about our charts? Um, let's let's drop our chart in here. So I'm locking it to that row, holding down the Alt key again, resizing and locking it uh, down here too. OK, so going back to our check checklist, the bottom of the space column, our buttons are now neatly positioned. So let's move on to color. Controversial topic in spreadsheets, isn't it? And you might say, well, Chris, color is all just subjective. There's no point. I disagree. Less is more with colors and you need some kind of color scheme. And you might say, Chris, this looks kind of complicated. And yes, this is probably more sophisticated than what a lot of people need in Excel. This is an actual color scheme from our client projects. For all our client projects, we generate a custom color scheme based on their company branding using an online color scheme generator. So if you want something sophisticated, that's what I recommend you do. You'll get these hex codes from the online color scheme generator and you can then go to more colors and you can enter a color using a hex code here that guarantees you have exactly the right color but you're saying chris just give me something simple man what's the simple solution here what's the 20 percent that's going to get me 80 percent of value yes our one color color scheme is what i recommend so go ahead choose a standard color i recommend blue why the standard colors because you can be sure they're not going to change um, don't use a theme color because that's going to change from system to system dependent on theme. Dark blue is nice. And then we're going to go for the principle looking at the checklist of light on dark, dark on light. Yes, it's a type of top tip on the checklist. So let's type in text here and you can see we've got a lack of contrast here. Yes, there is text in that cell. My sense of color, I think I'm pretty much colorblind. I can't see that text at all. That's because we need light on dark here. So this is our light on dark option and then using the same color, but in a lighter shade. Yes, this is a one color color scheme. We can go ahead and now use dark on light. So if I type in text here and that's it. And you've got a very simple color scheme there. I'll quickly do a little bit more. I'd also always use gray. Gray is such a useful kind of non obtrusive color for formatting uh, spreadsheets. And then what the hell? Let's go ahead and use a contrast color too. So probably this orange is nice. And there you go. That's a simple color scheme that I call it the one color color scheme. You can see it's ended up a little bit more than that. But crucially here, you can see we've got our format stored and that means we can copy paste the formats elsewhere in the spreadsheet. It's very quick to format your spreadsheet. So I recommend using a sheet. Sometimes I call it color scheme. Sometimes people on the channel have seen me use a format store spreadsheet. Use that for this purpose. So I'm going to go ahead, copy this base blue, control C, and then this hub subheading control alt VT on the Windows PC looks fantastic with this base blue. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the F4 key now. And can you see how quickly we can format this Excel spreadsheet? I just got rid of some columns at the end uh, that we don't need. So using the format store, using the color schemes page, we can work through these and copy paste in the formats again very quickly get the formatting effect that we need. Control of VT here. And then this is a different body of data, isn't it? So let's go ahead and use a different um, color option here. Can you see how easy it is? These are all lined up. Control C. And for this area, Control Alt VT and bring in that, sem that second complement color there. That's pretty cool. I'll go ahead now and let's think about the font, the type of font that we're using. The default font is most likely Calibri on your system. So I think you absolutely have to. This for me is a non-negotiable too. You have to use a different font. So what font should you use? Very simple for me, Arial. Arial is good. You can guarantee everybody has Arial on their system and it's straightforward. It looks good for business. You know, Arial in font size nine is a good solution. What are some of the risks here when you're choosing your font? Well, you've got to make sure you use a font that is on everybody's system. You can't ask people 
to download fonts just to use your spreadsheet. And be aware, some companies have their own fonts. One of our customers has their own font, so I did have to download that uh, to my system. Right, already things are looking a lot better. So I'm going back to our checklist here. We have a color scheme, um, some highlight colors. Okay, how many highlight colors can you get away with? There's nothing worse, in my opinion, than a spreadsheet that's got yellow and red all over it. But you can use highlight colors very sparingly to bring out important messages. So this cell here, uh, this, this sheet is based on a real client project and on this client project there's some VBA in the file and they need to save uh, their setup on a particular sheet and I want them to be aware if there's changes that need to be saved so I need this cell to be very prominent because I don't want my customer losing some changes. So this is an example of where you could use a bright color um, to for a specific role uh, on your spreadsheet there, but not too many. If I format a lot red, very simple, very quickly, that red doesn't stand out and it starts looking pretty shambolic in my opinion. Is that too harsh? I don't know. Pretty shambolic, uh, pretty quickly there. Okay, let's talk about formulae. So formally, I would recommend you format in a different color. This is where that gray color uh, is gonna help us. And you can see, I've just indicated with a little FX there that there are formally in these cells. We want people to be aware of that. You might want to lock cells as well. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but that's an option. Want people to be aware that there's formally uh, in these cells. Okay, so this should be a time and date. Uh, can we go ahead and put a time and date format in here? Alt H O E. I want to get to this formatting dialog box. Uh, let's go to custom and I want a time and date format here. What have we got? Uh, something like this uh, should do the job. Yeah, but we've got a slight sizing problem here. Um, so how to deal with that? Well, my foundational unit is 10. Going to go ahead and make this 20. That's quite big, isn't it? So would it work with 12? Okay, is it going to work with 14? Yeah, it does work with 14. So I'm going to now adopt 14 as a foundational unit um, to make sure that I've retained that consistency. And I can see it still fits nicely on one screen and this is now going to be 28. So I've switched to 14 as a foundational unit there. Okay, how are we doing on our checklist? So we've got some highlight colors. We've talked about those with colored formulae uh, differently. It is possible to color sheet tabs. Just as a quick aside here, um, this can be useful because sheet tabs that perhaps the user doesn't need to, you know, pay so much attention to. Perhaps you could color those a different color. Perhaps you could color the tabs to fit with a particular color scheme. This green color I've selected clearly doesn't uh, fit well with the color scheme, but it's just something to bear in mind. And once again, it's a way to differentiate and make your spreadsheet uh, look distinctive there. Okay. Right, cleanliness. cleanliness. So it's essential that cell text is wrapped Perhaps we could have wrapped this text to avoid having to um, expand uh, expand the cell there. You know, that would be nice. Keep headers short. These headers are short enough. What if you needed to include more information? Uh, I would recommend using a comment there. Okay, so you can put a comment in and we can say explanatory, explanatory text here. Explanatory text about this cell. And this, this just means you can keep the text in the cell down to a minimum. That's what we want. Whilst providing some more information that the user can view optionally when they hover over that cell. So this is a, a nice thing to use. Uh, while we're here, yes, use horizontal borders only. So in the checklist, I'm down halfway down the cleanliness column. Use horizontal borders only. You know, we could go ahead and use all borders, couldn't we? You say, Chris, why don't you just use all borders, Alt HBA on the Windows PC? For me, it makes things too blocky. And for me, it actually diminishes readability because as your eye reads across, it's actually being stopped. It's being stopped by that vertical border. So I really like this idea of horizontal borders only. How to do that, Alt H O E into the border section. Then I want top, middle and bottom. Is that from a game show or something? Something like that anyway. And then I can go ahead, select these cells to co-pilots back, go away. I can go ahead, select these cells to uh, hit the F4 key and repeat the last action. On the table, you know, that would work fine too. 
uh, just with the horizontal borders there. But let's do something a bit different for the table. I do recommend formatting as a table, yes. Fans of the channel will know over the years I've had a, a, a love-hate relationship with tables. Um, try formatting as a table. You can subsequently convert to a range if you want to do that. I recommend that really simple option that I just clicked on, uh, which gives us this alternate row formatting. So once again, we don't have um, all of the sales borders on all of the sales, but we do have very strong readability supported by just subtle formatting without too many borders yes it's uncluttered it's clean but it supports user assimilation of the data in other words it's easy for the users to read so back to my uh, checklist readability we're looking pretty good we've got good contrast we've talked about font size once again 100 zoom i recommend you stick with 100 zoom uh, icons icons can help support user understanding so we're getting towards our final sheet here. These icons, I'm not going to go ahead and put them in, but if you did want them, uh, you can go insert and then we can go to illustrations and icons here. I find there's some really nice options in icons. Cut out people is, is a bit weird. Wouldn't recommend that. But icons, um, there's some really helpful communicative visual aids here. I just took the quarter I typed in quarter there, that gave me a nice quarter and it helped me to communicate the idea of quarter. And that means we've been able to economize on text. Copilot coming back again there. We've been able to economize on text. I haven't had to write quarter because we've got the quarter uh, symbol there. Okay, that's recommended. Right, what about this? This trading volume column, this situation here, if you look very carefully, you can see these numbers look like they're a different order of magnitude, don't they? Because they're not lined up properly. I recommend you force Excel to show that decimal one way or another. You can use this option here and you can see we've now forced Excel to show that zero. These numbers are now lined up and it's communicating what the truth is, which these numbers are the same order of magnitude. So we've got that on the checklist, force Excel to show the same number of decimals. So we're getting pretty close. We're getting pretty close to something that um, I will be happy to show to a customer. Alt W V G, you can go to view and click grid lines to get that nice clean look. Finally, think about distinctiveness. Distinctiveness is the last column on our checklist. What's distinctive about your style? Uh, so my style, one thing, I'll just point out a few things here, but one thing I do is I like on the bottom, I like a thicker border. So on the bottom of a data set or a body of data, I like a thicker border there on the bottom of a subheading, just using the F4 key here. I really like this. A thinner border on the top and a thicker border on the bottom. And people have told me that's kind of distinctive to my style. So what's your style? What's your style? What are things you're doing in all your spreadsheets? Because what you want is for people to say yes. This person made that spreadsheet and that means people are becoming fans of your work. This is all good stuff for your Excel work and for your career. And something else I do is I use a faded fill for titles. So how to do that? How to use a faded fill? Right, so we're going to go into fill here, fill effects. And then we're going to use a vertical. And then I'm going to choose one of my color scheme colors. Let's go for this dark purple. Going to hit OK. So it's something like that. OK, we want to go the other way, but that's OK with our shading. So like this, that's all good. And then if I merge across here, Alt um, H M U, Alt H M A to merge across here. And then we change this font. So let's have Arial, uh, which is what I recommend. Then we change it to white, not red. Let's go ahead and change it to white. And this is another feature of my spreadsheets. I like using uh, this faded fill at the top. I don't think that color works perfectly, but you need some distinctiveness. What's your style? Let me know in the comments below this video, what is your, what are your formatting tips and what is distinctive to your style? This formatting checklist is available uh, for download. The link is in the video description below. You will go on our marketing main list, but I think it will be incredibly useful for you to help make your spreadsheets look beautiful, encourage people to use them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.